Welcome, welcome everybody. I am the air quotes comedian who the Israeli government describes as virulently anti-Semitic because they're too fucking stupid to know the difference between anti-Zionism and really, really, really enjoying the passion of the Christ. And this is the Polemics Podcast. Welcome. Yeah, it's funny because the passion of the Christ is over-the-top anti-Semitic, isn't it? That's why that is. Not anti-Semitism. That's not funny, is it? Look, it wasn't a funny joke to start with, and now I've completely drained any potential humour from it by explaining it. This week, I wanted to discuss my predilection for hedgehog porn and muse as to whether or not it is moral to enjoy such media given the ongoing exploitation of hedgehogs in the hedgehog porn industry. But, as a dutiful leftist with no impetus of my own, I have to follow the left-wing hive mind and discuss the issues of the day that all my fellow comrades are talking about. Apparently, the fact I've already discussed the Israel slash Palestine issue twice already, very recently, isn't good enough, and that the discussion of hedgehog sexual exploitation should wait until that becomes the hot topic of discussion. So, I recently learned that a Palestinian child got sentenced to 20 years in prison for throwing a stone at an Israeli tank. The question that I ask myself is, is that enough prison time for a child throwing a stone at an Israeli tank? You see, traditionally, tanks are made of hardened steel with angled surfaces to deflect bullets at rocket fire. Hardened steel with angled surfaces reinforced with belligerence. Apparently, though, Israeli tanks are made with aluminum foil and a sense of benevolent paternity. Thus, having a pebble thrown at them by a Palestinian child can do some real damage. Damage that can justify an Israeli response of either putting the child into prison via military trial where legal representation for the defence is denied, or just mowing them down in a hail of machine gun fire as casually as one might mow the grass on a Sunday afternoon, weather conditions permitting. Now, you might think that Palestinian children are throwing bits of gravel at Israeli tanks to protest the prolonged and brutal occupation of their Palestinian homeland at the hands of a racist government that believes genocide, however slowly implemented, is perfectly acceptable, especially when the mainstream media on the world stage, by and large, says it's perfectly acceptable, but you would be completely wrong. Palestinian children throw bits of confetti at Israeli tanks not because of a heinous ongoing invasion of Palestine and the blasé murder of innocent Palestinians just trying to live their best lives in peace. No, why they actually throw the middle finger to Israeli tanks is because they don't want to go to school. See, when a Palestinian child goes to an Israeli prison, their education ceases, which contravenes any number of international laws, but it is one way of ensuring that, as a Palestinian child, you won't have to do trigonometry anymore. This willful desire of Palestinian children to bunk off of school extends to them ringing up the Israeli authorities to tell them that Hamas is occupying the finger-painting area of their kindergarten, in the hopes that Israel will blow up the school with cruise missiles. It's the Palestinian child's equivalent of a snow day, except the Israelis like to wait until the children are in the classrooms before they attack. That that trick, I hear the Israel apologists say, Israel has a right to defend itself, which is much like saying that Nazis in World War II. Unfortunate that I have to specify the time period there, isn't it? It's like saying that Nazis in World War II had a right to defend themselves from the Allies. But unlike World War II, where you had opposing forces that were more or less equal in terms of military might, what we have in Palestine is an Israeli regime funded with billions of dollars of US taxpayers' money, an Israeli regime that is nuclear-capable and has state-of-the-art weaponry that 
that receives largely unconditional support from the mainstream media and then you have the Palestinians who have what amount to homemade fireworks, stones and a plucky determination to win back the homeland that was stolen from them. It's not a war, it's not a conflict, it's not even, as the press so often likes to describe it, a clash, because that implies two equal forces. It's like promoting Mike Tyson in his prime, fighting little five-year-old Timmy Davis, who is confined to a wheelchair. It would be fascinating to see how a boxing promoter could pretzel themselves into saying that that is a fair fight worth watching. Oh, little Timmy Davis clearly has the advantage because he is well rested on account of sitting down so much. Oh, little Timmy Davis clearly has the advantage because his white privilege will shield his ears from Mike Tyson's teeth. Oh, little Timmy Davis clearly has the advantage because he could potentially use his wheelchair as a weapon, even though this is a boxing match and not an episode of an American wrestling show. Yeah, I didn't even want to talk about this subject. I wanted to discuss the precarious nature of a steady income on the OnlyFans platform as experienced by hedgehogs. But apparently, nobody on the left cares about the subject. No, it's all Black Lives this, BDS that, capitalism the other. Hedgehogs don't get a look in. A Palestinian child who had the audacity to put a Palestinian flag on his bicycle was run over by the Israeli police, who subsequently refused to call an ambulance for him. I think that this was a reasonable, rational and measured response by the Israeli authorities. In the same way I think that a child of colour who flies the Black Lives Matter flag on their bicycle can be legally run over by an adult in their vehicle in some US states which is a real law and not something I just made up. The young child in question wasn't flying the Palestinian flag on their bike to protest the injustice of the Israeli regime stealing Palestinian houses in contravention of well-established international law. He didn't do it in defiance of an Israeli regime that seeks to establish a Jewish ethnostate while committing a slow-motion holocaust against Palestinians. No, he didn't do it because he's proud of his Palestinian history and heritage and wants to display such. He did it so he could bunk off school while he lives it up in the hospital for a few days. And that crappy callback brings us to the end of this particular episode of The Polemics. Be sure to hit the dislike button and then bugger off never to return, very much like a Palestinian who was born on Israeli soil and left Israel and isn't allowed back, ever. But some Jewish person who has never even been to Israel can go and become a citizen there any time they want.